Expanding on parametric equations, we're going to be talking about rectangular form. Now I'm just going to throw a bunch of information at you, so write it down, grab onto it, then we'll do some examples and hopefully it'll make perfect sense. So, to write in rectangular for form, first it's just going to mean writing it with no parameter. We can think of it as writing an equation to represent both horizontal and vertical components, or it's just an equation like you've always seen it, written just with just x and y, not a parameter t. Writing a parametric equation in rectangular form, first you want to solve your x equation for t, you want to substitute it in, and then put it in y equals form. So you just should have y equals something something x something something. Domain restrictions. All right, this is the same domain restrictions we've always been dealing with. No denominator can be zero, and we cannot have a square root of a negative. Okay, I think I just confused myself, so let's just do an example. Here we want to write these two equations in rectangular form. We've got y equals 4t and x equals t squared minus 5. Let's start by solving for t in our x equation. So we want to get this t by itself. So if I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get x plus 5 equals t squared. Square root both sides, I'm going to get the square root of x plus 5 is equal to t. And whenever you take the square root of both sides, you have to do your plus or minus. Now that we have our t value written in terms of x, we can just take this t and we can substitute it in whoop, all the way to our first equation, replacing t with plus or minus square root of x plus 5. Doing that, we're going to get y equals 4 times plus or minus square root of x plus 5, just substituting in our value for t. To simplify that, we can just rewrite this y equals plus or minus 4 square root of x plus 5. Now, we've written our equation in rectangular form. The parameter t is gone, we've got it in y equals form, and we just have an xy variable. Let's not forget about our restrictions on our domain. Remember, we can't have a zero denominator or a square root of negative. I see this square root of x plus 5 here, so I know, as a restriction on my domain, x plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that x is going to have to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So there's my restriction on our domain, and this is our equation in rectangular form. Let's look at a different type of example here. Same goal, right in rectangular form. We've got the equations y equals 4 sine theta and x equals 2 cosine theta. This time, instead of a parameter t, we have a parameter theta. Now, in theory, we could solve the x equation for theta, plug that back in, but that's going to get pretty messy and it's going to be hard to work with. So, I'm going to give you a little deja vu here. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, our Pythagorean identity. Let's see how this applies. First, let's solve for sine theta and cosine theta. That gives us y over 4 equals sine theta and x over 2 equals cosine theta. Now we can use our Pythagorean identity to plug in for sine theta and plug in for cosine theta, setting it equal to 1. Doing that, we're going to get y over 4 squared plus x over 2 squared equals 1. Again, just plugging these in for sine and cosine. From there, let's go ahead and simplify by squaring those out. That'll give us y squared over 4 plus x squared over 4 equals 1. And since this is an equation of ellipse, we can just go ahead and leave it like this. That's all right. We don't need to put it in y equals form. We've got the rectangular form of our original sine-cosine equations. 